So now we're going to look at question one on the study session, spectroscopy and atoms. Question one says white light strikes a diffraction grating or a prism and a rainbow appears in both cases. What color is on the top in each case and can you explain? So let's look at case A first, light striking a diffraction grating. So this little dotted line is going to represent the diffraction grating. I'm going to draw a line with my ruler that's going to represent the light coming in, the incident light. Now, the light that passes through a diffraction grating, some of it, if you remember, forms a spot, goes straight through and it forms a spot on a screen. So that's the central maximum. And that light will just be white if this is white light striking here. Now we look at um, other wavelengths and we look at the other spots that will appear, right? There'll be a central maximum, there'll be a first order and a second order and a third order potentially on either side of the central maximum. And their positions are dictated by our diffraction equ equation, sine theta equals m lambda over d where D is the slit spacing. That's the spacing between the individual lines on the diffraction grating. M is the order. Lambda is the wavelength. So if we want to reduce this to something really simple, we can say that approximately theta, the angle that the light gets diffracted through, is proportional to lambda, the wavelength. So longer wavelengths get bent by a larger angle, smaller wavelengths get bent by a smaller angle. So let's just draw in the position where, so let's say the first order will appear for say blue, and then let's draw in red for the first order. Red light has a longer wavelength than blue light, so red light will be bent by a larger angle. So these are both in the first order. So we see that in this case, red would be on the top in the rainbow produced by a diffraction grating. Okay, let's draw a line in the middle of the page and now look at the prism on the left-hand side. So what is a prism? So a prism is typically a piece of glass. It can be, in fact, many possible different shapes. I'm just gonna draw the simplest one that you might typically see, which is a triangular one. So let's again have a ray of white light coming in horizontally. And what happens when it strikes the grating? Well, the prism in this case. So we can, use, we can think about uh, Snell's law and the law of refraction. Law of refraction says that when the light enters a medium with a higher refractive index, its path bends towards the normal. So what is the normal? The normal, we can just draw it in. There's our normal at the point where the ray entered the surface. The ray does not go straight, instead it bends towards the normal. So here is a ray bending towards the normal. And then as it continues to pass through the prism, it goes in a straight line. And then where it exits, it will now bend away from the normal. So here's the normal. If it went straight, it would follow where my ruler is showing now. So I'll just draw that as dots on a line. It does not follow that direction. Instead, it bends away from the normal. And so it goes this way. So if we have our screen over here, some piece of the light is going to go this way. Let's say that that's the blue light, just for argument's sake, it really doesn't matter which one we picked. Let's say that that was the blue, and now we'll pick what would happen for red light, the red part of the white light. So we remember that refractive index varies with wavelength in the following way, this is called dispersion. This is, that's the word, dispersion, and the dispersion relation is such that the refractive index is always smaller for longer wavelengths. So there isn't some special equation for that, at least there isn't at this level of studying physics. So for smaller refractive index at larger wavelengths, let's imagine what happened to the red component of the white light. So if the refractive index is smaller, it means that light will bend less. If the light bends less, then when it comes in here and bends towards the normal, it doesn't bend towards the normal as much. So instead, it maybe goes this way. And then when it exits glass, it bends away from the normal, but again, it doesn't bend away from the normal as much. So here is where it might end up.
So there we have it. So in this particular case, with the grazing and the prism with this particular orientation of the prism, this is the, uh, the rainbows we'd get. So in these two cases, we would get the rainbows on top in both cases. Now, I guess if we could have drawn the prism with a different orientation, if we'd drawn the prism rotated that way, it would have been the opposite, but you would still be able to figure out what the answer is. Okay, so that's the end of that question. So I'm gonna stop the video at this point.